Greetings and welcome to this Bible study on Hebrews chapter 9. And the title today is Serve the Living God. And it speaks of the of covenant, the first covenant, which also had ordinances of divine service. And this divine service was was seen in a worldly, as he calls it, a worldly sanctuary. And this worldly sanctuary was a tabernacle made the first wherein was the candlestick. So all those that had been in the first sanctuary were also represented in the, in the second and under the new covenant. So there was a candlestick and there was a table and there was showbread and it was called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, oh yes, there was there were veils within the the temp, within the sanctuary, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. Now this is so important, the holiest of all. That area in which it represented the very presence, the holiness of Almighty God Himself. And in there was the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant, which was overlaid about with gold. And therein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. And over it, and we've heard of these before, the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat of which we can, cannot now speak particularly. Now, when these things were thus ordained, yes, ordained of God, ordained by God, and ordained for the glory of God, for the service of God, the priests went always into the first tabernacle. Yes, there was no problem in going, the priests going into the first tabernacle to accomplish the service of God. But there was a restriction of that going into the second. Because only the high priest could go. And that was once every year. And the high priest could not go without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. So, he and the people were far from right, far from perfect. The Holy Ghost thus, this signifying, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, as the first tabernacle was not yet, yet standing. The first tabernacle, yes, had to be, had to be there, had to be built before before the high priest could go into it, which was a figure of the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices. Yes, there had to be that offering to Almighty God Himself that could make Him, that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and cardinal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. The time would come and the time did come 
when one came in the name of Christ who came as, as a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building neither by the blood of goats and calves well that was insufficient that by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us isn't that wonderful eternal redemption that which would last forevermore for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes and the heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh how much more those just those little words there how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience purge remove take away from your conscience dead works and to serve the living God and for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament mediator between well, the man Christ Jesus the mediator the only mediator between God and man that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were made under the first testament yes there was that first testament and particularly that which was given to Moses they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance never-ending inheritance for where a testament is there must also be of necessity be the death of the testator and Jesus he is the one who died but yet death could not remove the purpose of God for a testament is of force after may not be dead otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood had to be dedicated with blood when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law the law had to be fulfilled there was only one who was going to fulfill it the man Christ Jesus he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people it had to be sprinkled they had to be cleansed they had to be set free from anything which would keep them from that living relationship with the living God and to be able to serve the living God from a pure heart a true heart saying this is the blood of the testament which God have enjoined unto you moreover he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry not one was missed out and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission oh that's so so vital so important without the shedding of blood is no remission of sins we would still be in our sins but for what Jesus has done and what Jesus still does it is therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these but the heavenly things themselves 
with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven himself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Oh, let us thank him that he is in the presence of God, appearing before God, pleading his blood, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Let's get there. And it is appointed unto men once to die. Yes, can only die once. But after this, the judgment. Oh, are you ready? Are you covered in the precious blood of Jesus Christ? Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin to salvation. And he will appear. He is going to appear the second time. He will return. The promises of God are yea and amen. The promises of God stand forever. The promises of God shall be fulfilled. And it's up to us to be ready, to be right with God and ready to go to be with him forevermore to his glory. Thank thee, O Father God for thy word which is so precious and that your word which is still being fulfilled to your glory and the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son and Holy Ghost be with you now and always Amen